Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Hokey Homebrew here, and I'm going to be bottling the Hokey ESB today. Um, I went ahead and saved you the torture of all the extra steps, or all the additional, ugh, all the steps to get up to this point. I've already boiled my corn sugar and all that good stuff, and gotten everything sanitized, ready to go. So I'm ready to start filling here. So I just wanted to say thank you for all those um, joining the experiment. I've seen a couple of your videos. I've gotten packages, actually. Well, there's one right here. I'll show you here, sitting right on the edge there. That's from uh, Main Brew Guy. Those are his beers. Wayner665 has already sent me his as well, and I've gotten a, a few other people email me and say that theirs are on the way. So, that's cool stuff. So here I got my bottle tree with my sanitized bottles. What I did was I, um, I washed these in the dishwasher overnight, let them, uh, air dry and everything in the dishwasher. Uh, my dishwasher here isn't as good as the one in my apartment, sadly. Um, the one in my apartment really steam dried them really good and it actually sterilized them. The, the heat killed off any potential bacteria and all that stuff. This one doesn't do a good job drying. So um, what I did was I went ahead and washed them in there and then I also dipped them in sanitizer, each of them, and then hung them on the bottle tree to dry. So that's what you see here. I got my... Uh, Bottling bucket filled up with the beer. I got right uh, right under five gallons total of bottling volume, about 4.75. Uh, I used a half a cup of corn sugar because I wanted to do a lower um, a lower carbonation on this one since it's an English style. Normally I do about three fourths of a cup um, if I'm doing this. I haven't done this in a while because I keg. So, anyways, uh, what else is there to say? I got uh, 24 little bottles and I got some big bottles here um, that I'll send out. And other than that, I don't think there's anything else to say, so I'm just going to start filling up these here, and um, if you have any questions, anything like that, um, there's only one person I have not heard anything from, and that's Ops Check Good. Uh, if you're watching this, let me know if you're still in this, or if you're not, it's okay if you're not, just let me know. Um, what else? I guess that's it, so if I have anything else, I'll come back to you guys. First bottle. Actually, one thing I did forget to mention to you guys, um, and I know some of you watched the hop experiment, and this, what, this wasn't a requirement, and still isn't a requirement, but it's still a good idea, and I keep forgetting to tell you to do this if you can, is to label your beers. Now, you don't have to do professional, I know a lot of people do professional labels, including me, I think it's fun, you know, to put a cool little label on there. You don't have to do that. What I'm, all I'm asking is somehow you label the beer with your name on it and which yeast you used. Those of you that have already sent your beers out, don't worry about it. Um, I know which ones are yours and I'll do it for you. But if you haven't bottled yet, put your name on it and what yeast you used, at least. You can make a fancy label if you want to. I know a lot of people do that and I'm going to do that as well. But uh, at least do that so we have an idea and we don't get confused. Last time there was some confusion on a couple of the beers as to whose they were. So just make sure you do that. Thanks. Okay guys, so that's the end of the uh, bottling day for the Hokey Homebrew ESB beer. Uh, thank you for watching this, and the beers are now in the closet at room temperature to carbonate for about a week to two weeks. Should be ready to drink after two. And um, I ended up with 24 12 ounce bottles and 12 24 ounce bottles. So right at two cases of beer, so that's good. 
And um, yeah, so I'm just gonna start cleaning up. Took me an hour and a half uh, before cleanup. So it'll probably be right at two hours for bottling. This is why I love kegging. This is why we all love kegging. So anyways, cheers guys. It's been fun. And uh, I look forward to seeing all your videos and getting your beers and trying them. It's gonna be fun. So cheers guys. Okay hey guys, so that's the end of the uh, bottling day for the Hokie Homebrew ESB beer. Uh, thank you for watching this, and the beers are now in the closet at room temperature to carbonate for about a week to two weeks. Should be ready to drink after two. And um, I ended up with 24 12 ounce bottles and 12 24 ounce bottles. So right at two cases of beer, so that's good. And um, yeah, so I'm just gonna start cleaning up. Took me an hour and a half uh, before cleanup. So it'll probably be right at two hours for bottling. This is why I love kegging. This is why we all love kegging. So anyways, cheers guys. It's been fun. And uh, I look forward to seeing all your videos and getting your beers and trying them. It's going to be fun. So cheers guys. Hey guys, happy homebrew Wednesday. It's Hokey Homebrew here, Ben. Uh, I know it's been a long time. I've been really busy. But uh, today I'm going to do what all of, not all of you, but a lot of you have been doing. And that's give you an update on the progress of my Hokey ESB beer. Competition still going, or not the competition, but the uh, experiment's still on. And this is my beer. Chilled it down. It's been carving for about a week. Let's not waste any time here. Let's crack into it. Okay, so we had a hiss. A little smoke. Now I chilled this down to about 50, uh, maybe a little less, 45 degrees. Uh, these beers are traditionally served a little bit warm and also low carbonation is always a good thing on these. So those of you that said you thought the carbonation might be a little low, uh, you're probably dead on because these styles are traditionally uh, served in hand pump casks which obviously uh, the carbonation is very low on those. So that's kind of what we were going for with the uh, half cup of corn sugar for five gallons. I'll right, leave that behind. Wow. This is great. Great looking, actually. I don't know how well you can see that. It's, um, man, if I put it up to light, it's a, well, it's definitely got bubbles coming up from the bottom, but very light carbonation. As you can see, the head's very small, which is good. The color is almost like a light brown, dark amber color with a little orange tint to it. It's a very good looking color. Uh, the camera is not doing it justice. I'm, I'm seeing a different color than what I'm seeing on the screen of the camera here. But I wish I had a flashlight. See if you can, if that helps at all. I don't know. Can you see that color? Anyways. Mm. Okay, so this one finished out at 1020. Um, my yeast was a very low attenuating yeast, only 67%. Um, I had a starting gravity of 1061, which is what we were going for. Uh, if you do the calculations, 67% uh, efficiency with a 1061 starting gravity actually ends up right at 1020. So I hit the mark. Mm, some dark caramel notes. A little bit of hops, but not much. But mostly some some esters, my fruity esters, which is which is good for this style. Let's give it a try. Wow. Sorry about the bad camera angle. Uh, my camera just died. I had to move it uh, to a location that could reach an outlet. So my head's kind of cut off here. But anyways, I was just tasting it. And... Mm. Lots of complex flavors going on in this. I'm getting like a dark 
caramel note, which is obviously from that caramel 120. But it's not like overpowering. Getting a little bitterness. But it's not overpowering as well. Which it shouldn't be for this style. <clears throat> um, I'd say it's more bitter than it is sweet. But not by much. But if you have a you know if you have a dividing line, bitters on one side, sweets on the other, it's definitely on the bitter side, but it's kind of teetering on the edge there. Pretty balanced. Mm. I'm really enjoying this actually. I'm getting uh man, I'm getting all sorts. I don't even know what to how to describe this. <clears throat> Dark caramel notes, hot bitterness, a little bit of hot flavor. I'm getting some ro almost a little roasty or nutty flavor. Yeah. And the fruity esters that I smelled are, are there. They're just in the background. They're not really overpowering. It's almost like a, I don't know, like a berry-like flavor or something. It's, well, that's a bad word. But it's definitely some sort of fruity ester, sweet flavor. The great thing about this beer, and it's pretty clear, too, the great thing about this beer is it's just, wow, this is incredibly complex. I don't know. It must be the yeast. Because, I mean, the grain bill wasn't that complex. It was just some caramel malts and pale malt and some wheat. But I'm getting all sorts of complicated flavors, and I think uh, the yeast is really shining through on this one. I think it's a winner. <clears throat> I wasn't sure of it if you watched one of my previous videos. It was a point, I can't remember where, when it was, if it was, I think it was when I was transferring it to secondary. And it must have just been young or something at that point because I, I wasn't digging it, but man, this is great. It's the perfect level of carbonation too, I mean look at that. I mean, you know, like I said, you want it to be low carbonated. Just smooth. Smooth mouthfeel, medium body. I mean, this is great. I like this beer. I think the most interesting part is that nutty, almost roasty flavor, slightly roasty. It's like, it's almost as if I put in a little bit of roasted barley, but I didn't. That must be from the yeast. I'm not sure. But that dark caramel malt also, just, oh, this is a stellar beer. I am impressed with that. So let's um, go find the, actually no, I already have it up. This is the description for the yeast I used. <clears throat> Flocculation is high, which is which would indicate why my beer is clear. I know some of you had some problems um, on the clarity, date, uh, not Dayton, but uh, Brewing and Q and I saw your video about yours. I forgot which yeast you used, but this one's coming out really clear. It's hard to tell on the camera because of the color, but I mean, you could s maybe you can see my fingers through that in the camera. Very clear. Uh, 67 to 71 percent attenuation, so it's going to be a very uh, leave it with a high final gravity. Um, the description says this strain produces ales with a full chewy malt flavor and character, but finishes dry. I can uh, I can definitely see that. I almost said that. It is finishing a little bit dry, even though it ended at 1020. It's got like a dry sensation on your tongue. Which is strange for a beer that ends at 1020, but, you know, I was sitting here after not drinking it for a couple seconds, and I realized that it kind of felt like a dry sensation. So definitely, I, I can agree with that. Produces famously balanced beers. I said that. Expect moderate nutty and stone fruit esters. So that nutty must be what I'm tasting and that roasted flavor. It doesn't say roasted. It says moderate nutty and stone fruit esters. 
The esters are definitely there. Best used for the production of cask conditioned bitters, ESB and mild ales. Reliably flocculent, producing bright beer without filtration. I think that description is pretty much spot on to what I'm drinking here. So it must be the yeast that's doing all the complexity in this because I'm definitely getting that nuttiness, roastiness, um, and those esters as well as that dry finish. Definitely a dry finish. And those esters. And yeah, very balanced. So anyways, I don't want to keep on going. It's kind of repeating myself now, but anyways, that's uh, my ESB. Um, you'll be all, all you guys involved in the experiment will be receiving one of these. Uh, this was my official taste test to make sure that everything's going good. I'll probably pop another bottle here in a few days just to make sure um, that I didn't get lucky and make sure that both of them carved up. You know, I always do two just to um, make sure. So, anyways, cheers, guys. And keep making your videos. Um, I know I've kind of been slacking. I've got like a thousand videos. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm over here is my subscription and I'm trying to go through all the videos here. I mean, I'm behind like two weeks worth on watching videos. So, anyways, I, if I haven't commented on your videos, I might, I've probably watched them. I just haven't had time. So, anyways, guys, cheers and I look forward to trying your beers. Send me messages if you need my address to ship. Uh, I've already had several of you do that. Don't forget to send the money in the boxes, and cheers.